Good evening everyone. Today we are going to see a post about the estimation of net positive suction height that is NPSH for a centrifugal pump and its interpretation. So how to estimate the NPSH as well as how to interpret the results that we are going to see today. And before going into the topic, so I would like to thank each one of you who has subscribed to our channel. And today we have reached a milestone of almost 1000 subscribers. And before the start of this particular channel, I thought maybe it is not going to work. Why? Because most of the times people are highly interested in entertainment channels considered when compared to ed educational channels. But you people have proved me wrong and I was very happy about it. And let's get into the topic about this net positive section head. So first of all we should understand what is NPSH and what is the purpose of NPSH. So the purpose of NPSH is to identify and avoid the operating conditions which might lead to the evaporation of fluids that is going to enter the pump. So here we got a centrifugal pump where we are going to transfer the liquid from a receiver which is having an open top and we are going to discharge it to another receiver which is above the suction head height like uh, which is above the level of the suction receiver. So whenever you are going to pump this way so automatically what will happen is if any bubbles are going to form inside this pump impeller casing so automatically the efficiency of the pump is going to reduce and sometimes the pump might fail due to the excess flow of air bubbles or the gas bubbles okay so depending upon this NPSH we can say whether the pump is going to be in a healthy condition or not so you can calculate this NPSH as a difference between the inlet pressure and the lowest pressure level inside the pump so let me write the formula here NPSH. So this is going to be the difference between the inlet pressure minus the lowest pressure level inside the pump. So in other words we can mention this as the static head. That means this is the static head. So static head minus evaporation losses. I mean evaporation losses in the sense, the head loss due to the vapors that are being generated inside the impeller casing. Okay. And when we are going to the calculation part, like the actual calculation part, I will try to elaborate this particular formula so that you can understand better. Like I will I am going to consider the friction losses and also the pressure heads, like the atmospheric pressure head and also the gauge pressure head. Okay. And now coming into this different types of NPSH. So we will be having total two types of NPSH. One is NPSH A and the second one is NPSH R. So this going to be like NPSH A refers to the available and this R refers to NPSH required. So whenever you are going to prepare or whenever you are going to design a particular system for pumping so we need to check this NPSH R like this is going to be defined by the manufacturer okay so using this NPSH R we can understand the point where the cavitation occurs so cavitation means this is going to be about the formation as well as the accumulation of bubbles around the pump impeller okay so the main aim is to avoid cavitation while pumping so coming to this NPSHA, so here we got a formula to calculate that. So we need to design a system so that this NPSHA should be always higher than the NPSHR. Okay. So we need to consider this particular rule. And now getting into the topic. So I'll try to take a case and depending on this case, let's try to calculate the NPSH. So let's say the, the static suction head that is available for the system is about 10 feet. Static head. Let's say this is approx 10 feet. And before considering all other things, I'd like to give you a correlation between the pressure, I mean pressure as well as the head. So head in feet, this is going to be as 2.31 multiplied with the pressure which is in PSI divided with the specific gravity of the liquid that you are going to check okay 
and coming to this particular constant that is 2.31 so this is going to be a ratio like uh, I'll try to explain you 1 feet cube so 1 feet cube of volume is going to accommodate approx 62.4 pounds of water and also 1 feet square of area so it's equals to 144 inches or you can say it as square inches okay and let's divide this 144 with this 62.4 so this is going to give you approx 2.307 so it is nothing but this 2.31 which we are going to use in this formula so it is going to be square inches per pound and if you have any questions about this so just try to perform the units and dimensions analysis for this formula so you can understand the case better and now i'll try to go with the case that is i got a static heat of 10 feet and coming to the atmospheric pressure so let's say it is uh, 14.7 psi and now i'll try to convert this uh, atmospheric pressure into head and just before that i'll just try to include the gauge pressure also so here the receiver is available at atmospheric conditions and there is no pressure which is being applied on the liquid level so this is going to be zero and now let's try to convert or uh, add up the total absolute pressure it's equals to 14.7 psi plus 0 it is going to be again 14.7 psi and let's convert this into heights so 14.7 multiplied by 2.31 divided by 1 so this is going to be around 33.957 feet so the formula for this particular NPSHA we can say it as the static head plus the absolute pressure head minus the head loss due to evaporation minus head loss due to friction inside the pipe that is in this pipe so we have calculated two things that is the static head as well as the absolute pressure head and now let's come to this head loss due to evaporation so let the solvent be water and the temperature of pumping let's say it is approx 180 degrees foreign heat and let's convert this 180 degree foreign heat into centigrades To calculate that we need to check this correlation that is c by 5 is equals to f minus 32 by 9 and here it is going to be like f equals sorry c equals to 5 by 9 into f minus 32 that is 190 minus 32 so the temperature is going to be 82.22 degrees centigrade and to understand the vapor pressure I will be using the Antony constants like the Antony equation so the Antony constants for water is equals to first one is like A it is going to be approx 8.07 and this is going to be 1730.63 and the next one is 233.43 so I have just taken the values of my remembrance so you can take the values from Google so that you can get some accurate values so the, va the vapor pressure it is going to be 10 power a minus so that is 8.07 minus 
b that is 1730.63 divided by t plus c that is 82.2 plus 233.43. So this you got in MMHG and let's convert this into PSIs. So just divide, uh, sorry multiply it with 0 0.01934. So this is in PSI and I'll convert this PSIs to head, I mean the pressure into head by just multiplying it with 2.31 divide with 1 that is the specific gravity of water so I got it in feet so from the particular temperature I have defined the head losses due to the vapor pressure so it is going to be 17.27 and the final one is the head losses due to friction okay and let's say the line or the piping length is almost 12 feet and the pumping rate is 50 gallons per minute and using this we can check the friction loss tables and depending on that we can estimate the friction head and let's say the line size is 2 inch okay so let's refer so here we got the tables like one and a half inch two inch two and a half inch three inch and six inch so up to six inch we got a uh, head losses tables and as we are going to use two inch line so in this we are going to check the discharge that is in gallons per minute so we are going to use 50 gallons per minute so here it is 50 and let's say here it is the head loss due to friction that is around 4.57 so the head loss is equals to 4.57 feet per 100 feet of line so this we need to check friction losses for water in feet per 100 feet of pipe okay that means per 100 feet of pipe you got a loss of 4.57 feet per 100 it is 4.57 and we have only 12 feet of line and we need to check with respect to that you got almost 0 0.5484 this is the head loss so this is going to be head loss for 12 feet that is 0.5484 and now we can calculate the NPSHA so NPSHA this is equals to the static head here we got 10 feet plus the head due to the absolute pressure it is 33.957 minus the head due to the vapor pressure it is 17.27 minus the head loss due to friction that is 0 0.5484 so we got almost 26.14 and we need to compare this particular NPSH available to the NPSH required so let's say the manufacturer or the designer has designed the pump for the NPSH of almost 15 feet so in this case the available NPSH is higher when compared to the NPSH R. So this is the interpretation. So NPSH A is greater than the NPSH R. So in this case there is no scope for cavitation. Also the pump is in healthy condition. So this is how we need to interpret the value of NPSH. So if you have any questions in this particular video, so just you write us a mail at pharmacalc823 at the rate gmail.com. And if you liked our video, please subscribe to our channel and also please share the video with your dear ones. 
and for your convenience i'll be adding a download link for this particular excel sheet in the description section of this particular video so you can download using the link provided thanks for watching the video